Welcome to Mastering and Guide Learning Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone, before I go explain a scanning technique for internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. I want to mention one important issue that relates and goes to all of you. And that is musculoskeletal damage uh, to the ultrasound tech. As you may know, over 90% of the ultrasound tech that work over 10 years, they have some degree of the musculoskeletal disorder. And 20% of them, with, after working five years, they have a serious issue of musculoskeletal problem. Among those are neck, especially uh, tension neck syndrome, thoracic outlet syndrome, rotatory cuff damage, uh, some kind of the carpal tunnel syndrome or uh, capital tunnel syndrome or radial syndrome, elbow uh, and fibromyositis, back problem, and all those stuff. Majority of those damage is because of wrong position. As you know, uh, each of us uh, every day at least spend five hours scanning position and all of them related to our position during scanning. And 90% of them can be prevented but by getting a wrong position when we are going to scan. So let's see what is the correct position for scanning. As a general rule, a correct position is a neutral position or a level position. What does it mean? Means we are sitting or standing straight forward, without, uh, uh, straight and without uh, bending to the side, and our uh, angle of our hip and uh, tie with the body is almost 90 degree, and the angle of the knee 90 to 110 degree, and elbow the same almost. And our uh, level of the vision, our eyes to the monitor should be top higher than the monitor. So we have some kind of the 60 degree uh, to the uh, monitor and our vision. For uh, hands and wrist, the same in neutral, neutral position, we use it and you can see each of those position, which one is correct one neutral position here as you can see from the side for the standing it's better we use anchor uh, one of our legs and uh, replace with each other every uh, few minutes every five minutes change those usually in the machine that's front of the machine we have a step you can put that one or use some stool when you are scanning on standing fortunately we have a ergonomic chair uh, that we can use for ultrasound is designed for ultrasound tech. We can anchor our elbow over those handle or in echo. We have the correct way we use it. The ergonomic chair is this way. Uh, the other way you can use it, but this is more correct way. So, you know, uh, any of this position will be wrong. Even uh, I forgot to mention here. The abduction, it should be less than 30 degree, uh, means your arm shouldn't go far from your body, more than 30 degree, and uh, the same at wrist, as you can see, and you shouldn't uh, lean, and you are bending your uh, upper body, so it's in long term, you will have 100% back problem in long term, five years, 10 years. Or here, we will have 100% in long term, you will get rotatory cuff problem and thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, or here, you can see at the wrist is too much uh, internal flexion, flexion. So you have to fix it and make your height or seat and make neutral position your wrist. So all of these position are wrong. For scanning of carotid, we have a two type of the scanning, one on the side and another on the top. On the side, the problem with on the side is that you have to anchor your uh, arm, forearm on the chest of the patient and many patients, they are not comfortable, first of all. 
Second, for the other side, usually you have to expand and extend your arm and your angle of the arm increased. You abduct too much your uh, arm. So in long term, you will have a little problem. Even if you use this technique, try to put some uh, fold a towel under your uh, your forearm wrist that doesn't <coughs> press on the patient and don't lean all your arm over the chest of the patient especially old people many of them they are not comfortable and they have uh, uh, maybe they don't tell you anything but they don't like it and for those, if you are scanning on the side technique, I recommend do standing because in that case, standing, your hand doesn't need to be uh, abduct too much and angle and anchor over the patient. Just make sure your uh, body is in neutral position and is much better in that case adjust the bed level of the bed your machine and even standing you can sit on the chair go higher is looks like you are hanging your arm instead of the bending and anchoring your hand and arm over the patient but my recommendation technique is on the top of the patient that is very easy you go sit about the patient here at the, and put uh, you can anchor your elbow over the bed or you can put some pillow or some pad on there and your hand and your arm your wrist will be very easy and without any force on your body the only problem with this technique you have to be by manual means scanning right side with the right hand and left side with the left hand on the right side, your machine will be on the left, your left side. On the scanning of the left side, your machine should be on the right, your right side and scan with the left hand. Actually, all my students before, uh, I taught them to scan this technique and they learn in less than two weeks, they become by manual. So that will be great if you practice and believe me, very fast you can see, get used to by manual and it's uh, for both of you, you and patient, this technique is the best. As I mentioned uh, many times, a good ultrasound tech is the one has highest anatomy knowledge, especially cross-sectional anatomy. Let's go a, fourth, a short review uh, for anatomy, a few minutes, and then we go how we scan. Here, as you can see, we have a superficial anatomy, thyroid and sternocleidomastoid and submandibular line. Between this uh, three part anterior to the sternocleidomastoid, submandibular line and side of the trachea, we have a triangle. We called it uh, carotid triangle that uh, exactly corresponds with location of the carotid. Here you can see those structures you maybe you see a lot in the image under the skin. You can maybe cross section surface of the platysma is millimeter thickness. You don't see it just you see hyper echo and hypo echo line with those deep fascia. And the only things maybe you can see uh, is external jugular goes over the sternocleidomastoid here. But if, when you put the probe, they collapse, so you don't see too much. Unless you put pack of gel and lose it, maybe then you see it. Here we have uh, more detail. As you can see, the direction and location of the those vessels in the wick, especially carotid and is, is internal jugular vein. And here, exactly the mu this muscle covered the, those uh, vascular compartment. Sternocleidal muscle exactly pass over the, this two. So anterior to those uh, uh, vessels, uh, carotid and internal jugular, is this muscle. As you can see, cross section here at the level of the mid. Uh, uh, why is mid? Because the, here is largest diameter of the thyroid gland. So I know this is a mid cross section of the neck at this level. 
and so you can see those structure IV uh, sorry internal jugular vein anterolateral to the uh, carotid artery we have a thyroid gland we have trachea posterior to trachea is uh, esophagus but since this uh, is uh, give doesn't let propagate the sound thyroid gland so you see black line below the thyroid you don't see any of those structures below the thyroid gland we here we may see you can see stenocleidomastoid and those uh, hyoid muscle thyroid and so on uh, between the these two vessel carotid and internal jugular you can appreciate it a uh, vagus uh, nerve that in ultrasound it looks like the honeycomb pattern i will show you maybe let's see how it looks like on the ultrasound here is the left uh, cross section uh, left side and right side on the ultrasound as you can see here i can see is upper part of the thyroid you can see here thyroid gland so this is upper part at this level almost you can appreciate here internal jugular because it's collapsing and here is must uh, sternocleidomastoid here we have common carotid artery at the level of the here close to the distal and those other structure here you don't see any beyond that because of thyroid uh, cartilage it doesn't let anything pass through and here you can appreciate transverse process of the vertebra give you a posterior shadow and those are scalenous muscles and you can see here the same sternocleidomastoid muscle collapsed internal jugular and uh, common carotid artery is almost we don't see any thyroid gland so this is distal cca on the left side of the patient Here I brought these two pictures that to make a good imagination of those structure around the vessel and you have to know exactly uh, what is going on when you're scanning with pathology. As you can see here, we have a lot of branches, small and large branches of the vein and beyond that, we don't have too much major branches of the common carotid. The only small branches may go to thyroid and other muscle, but they are not major. And look at the ori origin of the common carotid on the both side. The right side come from brachiocephalic at the level of the clavicle or collarbone. This one. So for the scanning proximal of the RC uh, right uh, CCA you have to put a little fan over the clavicle and fan down to the your left side and this orientation you can appreciate both of them subclavian and uh, cca but the, for the left side as you can see it is it branches from the aortic arc so it's deep for getting source of the lc uh, left cca you have to find more down uh, and more toward yourself tip of the probe you can catch it this uh, CCA left side and if you can here you can see the direction and pathway of the CCA is completely irregular it goes 12 o'clock then become this way then that straight then turning and the same each side can be different they are not symmetric but most of the time may be symmetric but you have to keep in your mind that when you are scanning along all of the some vessel know that you have to do maneuver twisting here your probe marker and uh, sound beam uh, is this way then you, you have to change it this way then straight and so on every everywhere another one look at the vertebral artery vertebral artery is branch of subclavian right and left it's at the begin origin is lateral so if you want to start the beginning you have to find to the lateral first you see uh, common carotid artery so if you want to see proximal of the vertebral you have to find more to the your left is here more right and the left side so then it goes to the medial then go straight in inside of the intravertebral foramen go straight up so 
keep in your mind when you want to survey and scanning vertebral artery you know the origin the direction and so on for make it sure look at this image look okay here we have those vessels left and right right is higher because it branches from the brachiocephalic at the level of the almost clavicle just you have a little fan down this one you have to find more deep here we have stericlidomastoid external jugular vein we have beyond the stericlidomastoid uh, we have those vessels uh, internal jugular vein are anterior lateral to the common carotid artery as you can see here and at the level of the thyroid gland as you can see here this level about the when you pass the thyroid gland it will be your distal of the CCA a little go higher it become bulb and then branches start at the level between the thyroid cartilage and uh, um, obohyoid, hyoid bone now let's go look at more uh, detail to the carotid arteries here we have anterior view of the both side left and right as you can see here we have vertebral these two vertebral artery then we have common carotid artery left and right side then we start branching these two uh, external ECA and ICA I am going to abbreviate from now on ICA or just external and internal you you know what am I mean and then we have as you can see ECA has branches here if you go from lateral view you can see this is right side of the uh, carotid artery and branches we are watching from right side of the patient to the right side here we have external carotid artery and internal as you can see bulb and look at the relationship between them usually most of the time not always most of the time ECA is anteromedial is a little medial compared to the ICA ICA is more lateral as you can see here and they are very close to each other actually in real life if you go open a neck they are contact almost a little subcutaneous uh, subconnective tissue between them otherwise they are almost at the beginning proximal part this area they are very close and contact we have carotid uh, body here between them uh, later I'm going to talk and you can see the uh, characteristic of the ECA is branches here is superior thyroid branches go up and then go down to thyroid gland and here we have next lingual uh, and facial and finally it goes to the cephalic but the ICA internal doesn't have any branches this is one of the characteristic feature in ultrasound for differentiating those two but as you can see only two branches just you have to look for it here is a horizontal view the way we scan the patient as you can see here is just cut it off this is vertebral if you cut I clean up those uh, extra vessel you can see that is what we are scanning and what we usually see when we are scanning the top is ECA the bottom is ICA and join this image with this image together in your mind and keep in your mind how they look to each other then when you scan it will be a piece of cake what maneuver should you do uh, if we want to get ICA and your probe approaching for example approaching lateral and you put your sound beam wave this way just you fanning a little up to your right side it's get ECA if you fan into your left side or down toward the bed it become ICA I'm going to explain exactly because we have two three technique for catching each of them let's go how we scan those two